So with our company, I don't want to just boss people around. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about having the company is giving my employees better quality of life. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I've taken, I've taken guys from grocery stores, fast food places, Lowe's, um, mechanic shops, Hmm. and they all walk taller now than they did before. Positively West Virginia is powered by BreezeLine high-speed fiber internet and sponsored by Highmark West Virginia, Freedom Key of Morgantown, Interaction Media, and Storymaker. With the help of these sponsors, we are able to share the positive business stories of West Virginians, including the one featured in today's episode. Well, folks, we're visiting today with Brian Hunley. He's with Hunley Heating and Cooling. He's the owner. Brian, thanks for being on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. It's great to see you. Great to meet you. I have you here in the studio. I look forward to to learning more about your business. Brian, tell us a little bit about Hunley Heating and Cooling. So we're a small heating and cooling company here in Morgantown, West Virginia. We service the surrounding areas as far down as Clarksburg and up into PA. Yeah. Um, we, we do residential, um, commercial, um, and yeah, that's okay. So, so, so you were talking about, you know, the, the heating and cooling business and obviously, uh, I imagine it's a competitive field. How did you get started in heating and cooling? What you 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 grew up here in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that background, how you got started. So, um, I'm from Charleston. I was actually, um, I was actually an addict, um, a heroin addict in Charleston for almost two decades. Oh my gosh. Um, I got into trouble, which is one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. Um, and I, I actually went to prison and, um, while I was in prison, I still thought about getting high every day. I was reading in the Bible um, where the disciples brought Jesus, someone they couldn't cast a demon out of, Mm -hmm. and he said only through prayer and fasting, um, paraphrasing. And so I decided to fast for seven days. I just drank water, prayed for God to remove the want and desire to get high. And on the seventh day, I stopped thinking about getting high. Wow. Um, Wow. Then I paroled. So I paroled to the homeless shelter in Fairmont, instead of going back to Charleston. Um, I worked at a few restaurants in Morgantown, moved to Morgantown. I started working at an apartment complex, cutting grass, and I made friends with the heating and cooling guy there, and I wanted to learn it, so he had me go on a couple installs with him. Um, His name is... Bill Bowden, he actually owns uh, what used to be Hugert's now. It's called yeah. Fix It Man. Yeah. Um, I wrote down every single thing he said. I still have the notes. Wow. Um, I made sure he had the tool he needed before he knew he needed it <laughs> so that he would take me on every install. I went to school for it. Um, I didn't learn as much there as I did on, on the job. He left there to go to Hugert's. And I stuck around and took care of around 800, around 850 apartments by myself. Mm. And um, then I, uh, but that's how I, that's how I got into it. And then um, I worked for a guy doing refrigeration for a year. Worked for um, a commercial, um, a commercial company that owns real estate around town. Mm. Uh, Glenmark Holding. Mm. Um, we still do work for them now, but while I worked for them, I would, I would just, I just kept getting more and more clients. And um, I'll back up a little. Whenever I took the test to become, um, there's different levels of technician, and so I was a technician in training. And when I went to take the test to become technician level one 
um, it had turned into pretty much a contractor's license yeah. uh, without the business and law. So within a year of me learning, I had my contractor's license. Um, so I made a Google page. I started doing work on the side um, and building up clientele, more and more customers called me. And then finally, I just felt like, um, I felt like I should start my own company mm. and I would pray about it. And then literally within an mm. hour of me praying, I would get two or three calls from people asking me to come replace their AC and furnace. Wow. Wow. Not, can you come look at it? <laughs> can you tell me if it needs replaced? That's I awesome. need it replaced. And so then, so I put in a five month notice with Glenmark Holding Company. Um, I decided I was going to start January 1st, 2021, because I wanted to start at the beginning of the year. Mm. But then I started to realize that that's the slowest time of the year. <laughs> so then I started praying about that. I'm like, do I really want to start that um, around this time of year? And then I got an email from a guy that runs an organization through the DHHR where they put in um, systems for elderly people and people with younger, younger children that can't afford it. And um, he said that between Monongalia County and Preston County, they, they already had about 75 installs that needed done. And he wanted us to be one of like four companies to do the work. And it started January 3rd of 2021. So, There's your sign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So That's it's great. God's, it's all been God. I've, yeah. I work hard. Um, but yeah, God's given me all the work and it's awesome. Yeah. Brian, what a story. I mean, and I appreciate you sharing that and uh, very personal um, and congratulations on your journey too. Um, how long uh, have you been clean now? So I paroled to the homeless shelter 10 years and two months ago. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. Stay strong. It's a, it's a, it's a story of, um, of, I want to say redemption, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and wow, that's, that's powerful stuff. And, uh, I'm just so happy to hear that and, 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 Man, I, it's an honor just to meet you, but I'm, I'm really impressed with that story. That's, that's awesome. I really think that uh, that's something else. Tell us your 30-second pitch for Hunley Heating and Cooling. What do you tell us, people, when you, when you see somebody or meet somebody for the first time? What do you tell them you do? Um, so we're a small uh, heating and cooling company in Morgantown. Uh, we do serve the surrounding areas also, but we are – because we're a smaller company, we can give more personalized attention and care mm -hmm. to customers. Um, we have a great crew. Um, the first thing that I did when I started my company was I created a motto, honest quality work at a fair price. And so we stand by that motto hmm. um, with everything we do. I love it. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Brian. This is Positively West Virginia. We'll be right back. Your prescriptions are designed to keep you healthy, active, full of life. At Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, we're making vital medicine more affordable. Because when your prescriptions don't cost an arm and a leg, you can use those limbs for something more meaningful. Because life. Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, West Virginia. At Freedom Kia, you'll find the perfect ride and savings for your summer adventures. This summer, dive into savings and fun. Just down the road is the Aquatic Center at Milan Park, where you can cool off and have some fun. Committed to fair pricing, excellent sales, and service with no hidden fees. You'll love the all-new 2024 Kia Sportage X-Line all-wheel drive leasing for just $239 a month. So whether you're diving into savings or fun, Freedom Kia and the Aquatic Center have got you covered. Visit Freedom Kia today right off of exit 153 on I-79 in Morgantown. Folks, we're back. We're visiting with Brian Hunley. He's the owner of Hunley Heating and Cooling in business since January 1st, 2021. Brian, uh, what's the thing you're most excited about for your company right now? Uh, growth. So um, 
I'm excited to, we have a couple new team members that we're um, training right now, and uh, we're about to hire another mm. um, installer, and we, we're almost to the point where I can actually get out of my truck and start managing the company yeah because uh, i'm out in the field quite a bit still yep. um so that's that's probably uh the biggest thing that i'm excited about yeah yeah that, being awesome. able to serve more how many people. folks do you have on your team so we have three installers um two service guys and an office girl so six not counting myself yeah that's nice that's a nice size company for just uh, a couple of years in so that's, yeah. that's wonderful. You know, um, I want to talk a little bit about the specific products and services you have. Now, do you do you sell new, uh, you know, uh, furnaces and AC units, heating heating and cooling units? Yes, sir. We sell the brand Ream. Oh yeah, Ream. Yeah. Yeah, and we sell the brand Train. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're uh, you're dealing with uh, even though you're small, you've got some major major muscle there with uh, great companies that you're working with. Yeah. So. Um, what would you say is the uh, like the breakdown between residential and commercial? So most of our commercial comes from um, property managers, yeah. like people that have rental units and that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, so we have uh, some very good relationships with landlords around town. Yeah, and like I said, I used to work at um, Glenmark Glenmark yeah. Holding Company yeah. and. So they have white diamond and black diamond. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's awesome. So we do a lot of commercial work for them. They own a lot of buildings in Saberton. And, uh, yeah, we have a lot of really good uh, relationships with yeah. landlords around town. Since you've owned your own business, <laughs> uh, you know, what's the most interesting thing you've run into out there in the field? Interesting thing I've ran – well, we run into a lot of uh, – a lot of systems that are oversized for people's houses. Yeah. Um, Why is it? Is it because they, they think bigger is better? Is that, yeah. is that what happens? And then ultimately what happens, it's inefficient and maybe even loud or, you know, is it? Yeah. Uh, depending on the size of the house, what will happen is if the system's too big, it will heat up too fast it'll just heat the room up or cool the room down that the thermostat's in and then all your other rooms stay cold or hot because it it only runs for a couple minutes and then shuts off yeah it doesn't run long enough to I see that being a, being a thing. keep things comfortable yeah absolutely cool so you know being a, a newer business owner um a first time entrepreneur, right? You just first first business you've owned. Absolutely. How do you get the word out there? How do you get new customers? So I think the fact that I started early, um, I, I made a Google page right away and you I saw the importance of digital. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I did that and then I <clears throat> learned what search engine optimization is. Yes. And I kind of honed in on that, learned a bunch of things about it, uh, set that up on my Google page and my the website that I was doing myself at the time, which I can't take care of that much now. Um, so I set up all that stuff and then I ask all customers for reviews mm -hmm. and then respond to those reviews. Um, but yeah, word of mouth is a big thing, but Google's definitely huge. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Good stuff. Right now, in terms of, of growing Hunley Heating and Cooling, what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? So I'm really good at making air blow. So I'm really good at fixing a furnace or fixing an air conditioner, replacing those things. Yeah. Um, managing the business is something that's completely foreign to me. Mm -hmm. So we currently are using a business coaching, um, group that we learned from an, a couple other companies in town that they use. Yeah. That's great. Well, it, it how do I say this right, the right way? You know, one of the greatest golfers of all time, Tiger Woods, had a golf coach. 
right? Everybody loved to swing, but he had a coach working with him. So I think, you know, as a business owner, um, I think it's a great idea. I have a, a business coach and I think that's, uh, that's something to be, uh, you know, to be, to acknowledge and, and, and celebrate because I think it is important to, uh, you know, cause we don't know everything, you know, especially starting out. And I, I certainly don't know everything about business, but man, it's, uh, it's, it's fun being on the journey and have somebody to go alongside of you that maybe ask the right questions because coaches, as you know, uh, don't necessarily give you the advice. They just ask the tough questions, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's like, that's a great co coach does that. And so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very uh, fortunate to have that as well. So, you know, when I think about um, a business starting out like yours, Brian, you've got a great backstory. You've got a uh, great experience on how you came up through the, you know, just learning this, writing down notes. You know, it sounds like you had a great mentor there starting out. Um, What's the vision that you have long term for your company? Like, where do you see this going? Um, well, I was told by my business coach uh, to um, dream big, you know. So my plan is to be big enough to take care of all of Morgantown and surrounding areas and not have to um, tell someone I'll get to them in a couple days. And then I would like to eventually, um, have a small unit in Charleston mm. in my hometown. hometown yeah. yeah. That's awesome. What, what's it like, um, finding people in the trades? We hear a lot that the trades, um, people, you know, H HVAC techs, uh, Service techs, installers—they're—they're they're in high demand. Is are you are you having uh, good luck with people? So, that probably should have been my answer to the question <laughs> about the hardest thing. But uh, so there's finding people, and then there's finding experienced people. Right. So, my approach has been to find people with good attitudes that I can trust. Um, trustworthy guys that have um, good work ethic, mm. uh, people who are kind and want to serve the customer, finding those guys and teaching them how to do heating and yeah. cooling. Character. Yes. Character matters. Absolutely. You know, it sounds like you know, you're focusing on the culture of Hunley heating and cooling and uh, you can teach, you can teach the tactical stuff, right? Yeah. Culture is huge. Culture is huge. Folks, this is Positively West Virginia. We'll be right back. My name is Caitlin Furby. I'm an interior designer with Remarkable Interiors. Our time is very limited. We're trying to do everything we can possible to keep our clients' projects moving and rolling. So Storymaker has been really great for us for putting out how to explain our company. I can sit and agonize about a post. And is this right? Does this sound good? When I use Storymaker, it sounds so beautiful and it was so easy and it saves me a lot of time to do the things that I'm really good at. Stay connected with an unbeatable deal from BreezeLine. Get reliable, fiber powered, 500 megabits internet for $39.99 per month with a $100 gift card and price lock guarantee, plus a free modem, free installation and free Wi-Fi your way. Folks, you know, here at Interaction Media, we're a media company and we rely on high speed internet every single day to get our jobs done. That's why we use BreezeLine. It's affordable, it's fast, and they're awesome people as well. Learn more at BreezeLine.com. Folks, we're back. We're visiting with Brian Hunley. He's the owner and founder of Hunley Heating and Cooling. They started uh, January 1st, 2021. Brian, uh, I love your story. Um, I love the fact that you have this vision of potentially opening up a division down in Charleston someday, your hometown. And uh, I think that's that's pretty awesome. I um, want to talk about uh, leadership because obviously you're leading a company. Um, I, I believe, um, that leadership is one of the most important things today. There's a, I think a, almost a profound lack of leadership in a lot of areas in American culture in business. It's extremely important. What do you think is the most important attribute of a successful leader in business today? Um, I would say servanthood. Yeah. Talk uh, about that. So instead of, so with our company, I don't 
want to just boss people around. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about having the company is giving my employees better quality of life. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I've taken, I've taken guys from grocery stores, fast food places, Lowe's, um, mechanic shops, mm -hmm. and they all walk taller now than they did before. They just, they take so much pride in their work. They love what they do. That's awesome. Yeah. So just, um, it almost feels like, um, it's like my second family. So. Yeah. Well, servanthood is, is the word that you use. And I, I like that. Actually, I love that uh, term. Uh, you also referenced God several times in the Bible. So it kind of reminds me that, you know, Jesus himself said, I came to serve, not to be served. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, so that's servanthood, right? Yeah. So how could I lead a company without thinking about that? Yeah. You know, he, yeah. God in human form yeah. came here to serve. Yeah. So paid the ultimate price too. Absolutely. Amen. Ryan, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. You know, um, one of the things that um, about your story that I think is is pr really profound is the fact that, and you shared with us that you were, uh, you know, an addict for, for several years and, um, you know, went to prison and, and um, I love the fact that you, you, you read about fasting and praying and you did it for seven days and on the seventh day, yeah, the the um, the cravings were gone, and I think that's a really really powerful thing. Is there, um, you know, is there opportunity? Um, maybe you can speak to that for somebody who may be struggling with addiction um, about hope. You know, because I feel like I don't I don't know that I've never been an addicted, um, but I feel like if there would be some kind of a hope situation out there for people, what would you say to that? So that's such a a hard one, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there's always hope. Um, with people trying to get out of addiction, I would go to rehabs, and I always thought that they would just flip some switch, mm -hmm. and I would just stop thinking about yeah. getting high without putting in any work. Yeah. Um, I think meetings are good. Um, just the the center of it is it's self-centeredness and sin uh it's a sin problem so hmm. uh but god god can use your story so mm -hmm. you know i mean for years i prayed for god to remove um the desire to get high for me and i wasn't really willing to put in a whole lot of work and Addiction is just so, so such a stronghold, yeah, in people's lives. But mm -hmm. there's definitely hope. I mean, I have been homeless. I've, I've done, I've just been a horrible person. I'm not, mm -hmm. but uh, God's done a, just a crazy amount of things. Mm -hmm. I, since uh, I paroled to the homeless shelter, I. I own my own house now, I have a beautiful family, Amazing. a small company, but like more than anything, I have um, freedom yeah. in Christ. You're free. Yeah. And peace. Yeah. Peace. And peace. That's awesome, man. And thank you again. Like I said, it's such a personal thing, personal journey you've been on, but I, I think it is profound and, and hopefully uh, somebody who might be listening to this that's been struggling will hear this too as a, uh, an encouragement. You know, and because uh, that's what ultimately we're supposed to do too, is right, is encourage one another. Yeah. <laughs> because it is a tough world out there, and and man, it seems like every time you step out of your house, there's arrows slinging at us. You know, mm -hmm. and so we've got to uh, be um, be strong, uh, be uh, diligent in our faith, and 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 do do what we're supposed to do. And I think that's that's a cool thing about business, right? Is you're you're having an impact not only on your family, but you're having an impact on a lot of families. And I love the the way you talked about, you know, bringing these, you, you called them your guys, you know, pulling them out of these fast food places or maybe a mechanic shop and they're, they're walking in a different, diff, with a different stride and they're holding yeah. their head up higher. And uh, I think work does that, you know, I, I think good quality work when you, when you're in the, uh, in a position where you're 
put it this way, doing work that you were created to do, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's a reason you're doing what you're doing, Brian. And I think, yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's a pretty cool Testament. And I feel I like, I've, I feel like I've, you know, when I was in addiction, I just destroyed things, Yeah, you know, relationships mm. and, um, now I can actually fix things. So I would do it for free if I didn't have bills. Yeah. I, I really would. If I did if I could get away with doing it for free, I would do it for free. That's how much I love it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Well, it does definitely sound like you're doing the work that you were created to do. You, it took you a while to get there, but mm-hmm. you're doing it. And I think that's that's really powerful. What would you say to somebody um thinking about starting a business in West Virginia, Brian? What what kind of advice would you give them? Take advantage of resources. So there's um, a small business center in Morgantown that has free resources. Um, Depending on what type of business that you're starting, find business owners out there that may even be your competitors and Mm. try to make friends with them and find out um, from them the struggles they've had, how they've got through them, Mm. because there's enough work out there for everybody. And I've made friends with a few of um, owners and management and the bigger companies that are my competitors. And they've been great just telling me, sharing with me the problems they've had, uh, how Mm -hmm. they've overcame those problems and Mm -hmm. just helping me not make the same mistakes, even though I already made a lot of those, but also be careful with your money. Um, Credit is probably going to be a necessity. Um, just be careful with that because you can drown in yeah. credit, uh, in debt, I mean. Yep. And then also, um, true blank. Yeah, no, that's good. So <laughs> those, are, those are great uh, words of wisdom, Brian. I appreciate you sharing that. How, how can folks... Uh, that may be listening, get in touch with you. Uh, learn more about Hunley Heating and Cooling. What's the best way? We have a website, um, hunleylikethewolf.com. Uh, it's a play on the Duran Duran song. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And uh, we also have an email, hunleylikethewolf at gmail.com. Great. Um, so you can reach out that way. Yeah, we'll put put show uh, put links to all that in the show notes, and folks can reach out and, and give you guys a call and get uh, get their heating and cooling needs met by Hunley Heating and Cooling. Brian Hunley is our guest. Brian, it's been great to have you on the show. I love your story. First of all, uh, I love the the faith that you have. Uh, I love um, uh, the, the the fact that you're bringing leadership to your team raising them up and giving them purpose in their work. So I just want to encourage you to keep up the great work. Thank you. Absolutely. We'd like to thank our partners, Highmark West Virginia, Freedom Key of Morgantown, Interaction Media, Storymaker, and our studio sponsor, BreezeLine, for helping to share these positive stories. If you'd like to become a sponsor of the Positively West Virginia podcast, visit PositivelyWV.com slash sponsor. Folks, that's a wrap on another episode of Positively West Virginia. If you or someone you know would be a great guest on the show, drop us a line on our website at PositivelyWV.com. Of course, we appreciate your comments and encouragement along the way. On behalf of our entire Positively West Virginia team, including our producer today, Mr. Justin Schofield, I'm your host, Jim Matuga. Stay positive, West Virginia.